everybody. Welcome to yet another animals and pulp culture comparison video with myself, Shelby, from Shelby on Safari. And we are going to be going over the latest Pokemon Go news tonight. I am so excited. It was such a relief to pick up my phone and find another amazing event is coming to the platform in just a few days as well. So if you're new here, welcome. I'm a wild animal biologist who loves pop culture and animals and often brings my two passions together in a nice pop culture sandwich to raise awareness of some incredible animals that in this case are like real life Pokemon. And so tonight we are gonna be going over the Luminous Legends X event in Pokemon Go that's coming in just a few days and look, specifically at the legendary Pokemon that will be making its Pokemon Go debut, both in the real life, but also its animal animal, bleh, animal counterparts. There we go. But tonight's going to be a little bit different, friends, because I'm going to pose the question to you. Maui's scratching at the door. Maui, you can't come in here, mate. Sorry guys, <laughs> I'm gonna give you three options to choose from. We are gonna cover a extinct animal, a mythical animal, and also a real life animal. And speaking of a real life animal, hang on a second. Really, you had minutes to come inside. Come on then, diva. You wanted to say hi, now say hi. There he is. He's a naughty boy scratching at the door. Well, are you going to say hi or what? Oh, he's rather grumpy. Oh, hello, Tiffany. He's literally running out now. Oh, the joys of live streaming. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, Maui seems to know that I'm live streaming. and He's like, hey, I want to come in and bug you. Let me close the door just ever so slightly. Well, friends, now that Maui has said his... Uh, hello, I feel like we can start now. <laughs> so in part one, like I said, we're going to go over the Luminous Legends event that is happening in just a few days, specifically starting at 10 a.m. on Tuesday, May 4th and going until 8 p.m. on Monday, May 17th. And he's just come back in. He is such a little stinker. Talk about a real life demigod of mischief. Ah, yes. Thank you, Tiffany. Be nice, Ken. That's right. Ken, I think Ken and Maui would get along quite well because they seem to be quite the mischief makers. So friends, what can you expect in this new Pokemon Go event? Well, quite a few things and a couple of which I'm really excited for because I've been waiting for some more Kalos Pokemon. I loved playing X and Y on the good old Nintendo platform and Maui, sorry, he knocked over one of my signs. Actually, I'll show you guys the zoo sign that he knocked over because it's rather fun. Might as well, since he's already uh, thrown the live stream for a loop today. Uh, this is from a beloved collection that's near and dear to my heart that they were getting rid of. And so we have them in our house. And yeah, I have meerkats and then I have lemurs, a lemur one that I have just at the top of uh, my door. But because we were painting, we had to take them down. And so now we decided to knock them over. So yeah, cool little zoo signs. So yeah, when you come to my house, you'll see meerkats, lemurs, we have Goat Mountain, the restaurant, a lot of different things a part of the uh, Shelby on Safari household. So friends, yeah, I'm glad you think that's cool. I thought it was pretty cool too. Um, yeah, Goat Mountain makes me laugh though. So I got really spoiled when the husband gave me meerkats and lemurs, which was quite nice. So the Pokemon you can expect in the <laughs> Pokemon Go Luminous Legends X event are Spritzy, Swirlux, which is like a crazy hungry ice cream. Uh, speaking of ice cream, because I know my friend Tiffany likes ice cream. But then more importantly, Gumi, a cute little Pokemon that will evolve. And uh, I can't wait to catch a Gumi because they are so adorable. Uh, Ash had a Gumi in the anime and it just was so full of character. It was the sweetest darn thing. And I can't wait to get my hands on one. Although it seems like it's gonna be a little rare to get a Gumi, but uh, keep your eyes out. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments after, if you're watching this after the event started, if you managed to catch one, because I'd be really excited to hear if you do. But more importantly, the new Pokemon that is being released, the star of tonight's live stream is Xerneas, the life Pokemon, which is also a fairy Pokemon, and it is crazy looking. You might've seen it in the thumbnail. It's very much based on a stag that has some quite incredible antlers that 
glow and magical, magically glow in active mode. And so we're going to be going over what real life animal could Xerneas be based off. Uh, and when I say real life animal, tonight's little spin, like I mentioned before, we're going to be looking at a mythological creature, an extinct creature, and a real life, currently real life animal. And I want you guys to decide which one you think probably influenced Xerneas most. So I should mention with the Luminous Legends event, Luminous Legends X event, because X and Y will be getting Yvetal later on, hopefully, fingers crossed, not too long after this one, but you'll be getting a new lure to help evolve our little friend Sligu, the evolved form of Gumi, into Gudra. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this again, just because I love Gumi, and I gotta mention, I really want to do a proper Shelby on Safari video on a real life Gumi and talk about a very important animal that has an incredible story. So spoilers, watch this space because yeah, well, with the evolving of Gumi, you need it to be raining. That was always fun to try to get it in the game. So I was curious to see how they were going to bring that in Pokemon Go. So they've introduced a new lure, the rain lure module, which you'll be able to get during this event. It sounds like you may be able to get it in field research tasks, which is exciting. Um, and of course, probably buy it because we know they like to put things in the shop. So you spend all your coins in there. But then also you will be able to evolve it when it's raining in the real life, in the game, which is so fun. I love that aspect of playing Pokemon Go. Let me know in the comments below if you find uh, that it, real life weather the same kind of entertainingness that I do I love when it's off like when it could be drenching and it shows sun on my game and I'm like really really I wish it was obviously I know you can alter that and report it the weather being silly but nothing quite excites me as when there's snow on the game and because then I use that as oh my gosh it's gonna snow and I get all excited and I run around and yeah that happened about like three times this year I'll gladly admit I saw snow first on Pokemon Go and then I looked outside. So <laughs> awkward fun fact for your Tuesday. So friends, another exciting thing with the Luminous Legends X event coming to Pokemon Go very shortly in just a few, time, few days time will be of course Xerneas, but it will be in five star raids. So save your raid passes, you know, save your uh, remote raid passes, I should say. So then that way, hopefully you can tag up with a few friends and hopefully defeat Xerneas and catch it. So seeing as it is a pure fairy type, I should mention you're going to want a poison, steel, and or fire type Pokemon to help defeat Xerneas. Obviously, fire type's quite nice because we have a few mega evolutions that have been released in Pokemon Go. So get those mega candies started now. Start walking with your Charizard to get those mega candies so you can evolve one to then battle Xerneas and raids and hopefully catch it. Also, uh, more importantly, <laughs> if you're like me and trudging along through the research uh, medals to try to catch all the dragon type Pokemon, more dragon and fairy type Pokemon will be appearing in the wild, which is exciting as well as uh, in research, field research encounters, uh, seven kilometer eggs as well, Spritzy, Swirlix, Gibble, Cleffa, Igglybuff, and Azura will all be showing seven kilometer eggs. Which, by the way, in case you're like, oh, she's throwing so much information at me, I'll put links in the description below. So that way you guys can refer to it later, alligators. But the most crazy thing that is coming, I would say, uh, to the Luminous Legends X event in Pokemon Go is the worldwide challenge to catch 500 million fairy type Pokemon. Yep, that's right, friends. 500 million fairy type Pokemon. Jiminy Crickets. That's a lot of fairies. And the reason why you're going to want to team up with your friends around the world and maybe not even friends, like I know Ken plays Pokemon Go because I convinced him to and uh, one might not call him my friend. You know, we got to team up. We got to team up to work on this quest together. So then that way we can unlock three times catch XP for the remainder of the event. So it's really important, just like that raid one that we had just recently, try to do as many as you can, catch all the fairies that you can. And uh, let's get that three time catch XP points unlocked. Cause uh, yeah, I ain't gonna get to level 43 on my own. <laughs> I'm trudging my way through. It is uh, quite trubbish if you ask me. <laughs> See what I did there? Ah, oh, yes. Oh, Emma's joined. Hello, Emma. You've uh, joined us just in time. We've covered what you can expect in the Luminous Legends Pokemon Go event that's happening in a few days time. 
including the release of Xerneas, the legendary Pokemon. And so I'm gonna tell you a bit of backstory about Xerneas. So then that way in part three, you'll be able to have some better insider information as to what animal counterpart you think Xerneas is most like, because I'm gonna introduce you to an extinct animal, a mythical animal, as well as a real life animal that still exists today. So uh, get your thinking caps on friends. So <laughs> I kind of want to make you play Pokemon. Well, you see, Tiffany, when you're in amazing places such as Greece, could you imagine like having records of all the places you've been? Actually, I dropped my phone because it was buzzing because I wonder if there was a group chat going on. Uh, <laughs> you can pull up a map on your phone and you can actually see like evidence of all the places you've been. And so like when I went back home to California, I tried to get as many gems as possible and uh, so on and so forth. And so that's a really fun way. I love looking at the map to seeing all the places I've been. And uh, yeah, so that might be interesting for you. And uh, I see our friend Jason has joined us. Hello, Jiminy Crickets, the whole gang is here. So friends, let's talk about Xerneas so that way you can then know what is this Pokemon like so then we can talk about a real life counterpart. Now, I'm sorry I chose three, but I thought it was just too interesting to pick just one animal comparison to do, friends. So Xerneas is the life Pokemon. That's the key kind of thing about it. It brings about life. It is a fairy type Pokemon and it's solely fairy type, which is quite intriguing. Uh, well, I should say Xerneas was introduced to us in the Kalos region in the games X and Y. Xerneas, Yvetal, is counterpart, aptly named for the games. Uh, now, some stats about Xerneas. Uh, so they get up to three meters tall, which is quite tall, uh, and also weigh 215 kilograms. So we're going to be referring back to the height and the weight through with some of the counterparts because I wonder if that might play a factor into some of your decisions about what real life counterpart this Xerneas Pokemon could be like. Now, uh, fun factoid for all you pub quiz friends who go to Pokemon pub quizzes, which I don't know if they exist, but if they do, sign me up, uh, is that Xerneas is tied with Galarian Weezing for being the tallest fairy type Pokemon at three meters tall. Now, Galarian Weezing, for those of my friends who may not know, uh, Weezing is like a smoke, smoky kind of poison type Pokemon, and Galar, Galarian Weezing, is based off the UK. And so it was very influential of the Industrial Revolution. You know, London, I think of Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool comes to mind, these industrial cities. And Galarian Weezing has like a smokestack essentially on top of its head. And it has like a crazy mustache. It is the most ridiculous looking Pokemon. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but yeah, it apparently is three meters tall, same height as Xerneas. Now, Xerneas has two different modes, which is rather intriguing. A lot of people might think, oh, it's the shiny version. No, no, not quite. There's the active mode, which it has multicolored antlers, you know, some beautiful gems on it. It looks really stunning as far as Pokemon go, because it is very colorful, at least in the antler form. And then in the neutral mode, it's more pale blue, more muted. And there's a few other differences depending on the modes, but we'll get to that in a bit because it revolves around the antlers, which is exciting. And so, uh, <laughs> oh, my friends in the chat, you guys are so funny. Yeah, <laughs> 10 sewing projects. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. That's a lot of multitasking. I don't know how you do it. Um, yeah, I, I can't multitask. Obviously, I'm getting distracted by you guys in the chat. Uh, so <laughs> back to Xerneas. Xerneas has the power to share eternal life. Like what a crazy like ability to be able to be like, poof, here have life, poof, here have life, poof, here have life. Like that sounds so amazing. And uh, it, it's quite interesting because it's the counterpart to Yvetal. So I mentioned that Xerneas and Yvetal are part of X and Y, the Kalos region games of Pokemon, newly being introduced into the mobile game, Pokemon Go. Uh, so Xerneas shares a kind of eternal life and Yvetal is all about that destruction. So quite a yin and yang per se there. But interestingly enough, although they seem quite opposites, they do have the same stat distribution, which is, well, peculiar. And another pub quiz, Pokemon pub quiz factoid for you there. So even though they're very different in their uh, abilities, they have the same stat distribution. 
Now, in the anime, shout out to like one of the weirdest and like saddest episodes out there where literally we watched it and I was like, what just happened? You know, the trolls in Frozen where they blink and you can hear them audibly blink. That's what happened after I watched this episode because <laughs> it gives a bit of backstory into the legend of X and Y. In fact, I think that's the title of the anime episode, The Legends of X and Y. And you see Xerneas give too much of its life energy. And then it transforms itself into a tree and sleeps for a thousand years. I mean, to be fair, if I gave all the energy I could out to the world, you know, I'd be pretty tired too, and I'd want to sleep. But I don't know if I'd sleep for a thousand years. That seems quite long. Um, yeah, so, oh, 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 they're here. Oh, hello, Rita. Hello, Katie. I wonder if Thaticus will show up. Um, I should, or should I say, subscriber. Anyways, so <laughs> let me know in the comments if you would sleep for a thousand years. Uh, well, actually, no, we'll pose it this way. If you had to fall asleep for a thousand years, what would you transform yourself into? Would it be a tree like Xerneas? Because that would be quite cool to, you know, throw some shade <laughs> out there. I didn't mean it like that, but <laughs> it came out like that. Throw some shade out there, you know, for animals or, uh, you know, maybe grow some fruit, things like that. Would you transform yourself into a, um, I don't know, a, a surfboard? I, what would you transform yourself into if you had to go to sleep for a thousand years? Please let me know. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you guys make me laugh. Thanks so much for coming, guys. You you do make me make me chuckle. Well, friends, so that's just a bit about Exertius, uh, because, well, it's time now to get to the heart of what we do here on Shelby on Safari is look into the Pokemon and animal counterpart comparisons. Obviously, I do superheroes, I do Doctor Who. That was one of my favorite ones. I love doing the Doctor Who ones. Uh, Animal Crossing, we do a variety, but tonight it's all about the Pokemon. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, click that little red button, help my channel grow. I'd be most greatly appreciated. Actually, subtle plug, since someone actually decided to show up in the chat, if you haven't already, after this video, click on the playlist, uh, Animals and Pop Culture Comparisons, or the Pokemon playlist, so you can see the latest video that came out on Friday with my rival, Ken, who's uh, trolling me in the comments right now. We looked into Pokemon Snap, the new Pokemon Snap game that's coming out in literally, what, three days? Woohoo! How exciting for the Nintendo Switch, and looked into the real-life Illumina phenomenon, which is exciting. And Ken is a self-proclaimed expert photographer, so I thought I might as well get some tips from him to see uh, what he suggests for Pokemon Snap. So friends, what animal expired Xerneas? Now here's your homework, friends. I'm going to introduce you to three uh, animals, <laughs> and I want you to tell me which one you think inspired, inspired Xerneas most. So Xerneas, the life Pokemon, it's very similar to a deer, has some crazy antlers that like change colors. It's quite big in stature and size, very impressive, and uh, mostly gives life and gives energy. So here we go. First one, we're gonna look at, this is gonna be fun for me to say because I'm rather sleepy, uh, Eucalydosaurus, yeah. Let's try that again. Eucladoceros, Luca de Seros, potato, potato. I'll put it in the description. It's an extinct genus of deer species. So that's right, we're going back in time for this one, friends. Specifically, the Pliocene to Pleistocene eras. So I mentioned size and stature of Xerneas being rather large. These extinct deers were also rather large. They reach up to 2.5 meters in body length alone and about 1.8 meters tall. Now, if that wasn't crazy enough, their antlers spanned 1.7 meters. So 2.5 meters in body length, 1.8 meters tall, and 1.7 meters wide. Whew, that is a lot of deer. And uh, interesting uh, to little factoid about the Euclidosaurus, Euclid, yeah, Euclidosaurus, yeah, you can tell I don't 
really study uh, <laughs> ancient animals. I'm more focused on real, uh, not real animals, but um, modern day animals that are still <laughs> around. Uh, they were first discovered in 1841 by Filippo Nesti. You know, I love a bit of history. So I had to throw in when they were discovered only in 1841. Uh, could you imagine being Filippo Nesti and coming across these wicked big antlers? <laughs> that would been crazy. Oh my goodness, how insane. So speaking of their antlers, they are actually the first deer genus to have highly evolved antlers. So before then, they weren't really complicated. And then we get to the Euclidosaurus, where uh, they were split into 12 tines per pedicle. So pines are like the little pointy things, uh, and pedicle is like the one. And then that's another pedicle, so two pedicles. And then tines are the little points. Um, so up to 12 points, for lack of a better phrase, 12 points, 12 tines on the Euclidosaurus. And with the Exernius Pokemon, they have only four tines in their neutral mode, so when they're pale blue, or when they're actively sharing their life energy, they have eight. So I'm pretty sure... Exernius needs, you know, to make up for those crazy, crazy antlers because the Euclidoceros certainly has a lot more when it comes to the antler department, that's for sure. But I just thought because of the rather big stature, you know, their impressive horns, their impressive antlers, I thought, whoa, that animal totally could have inspired Exernius just because of the sheer stature alone. So that is the Euclidoceros, and I really hope I don't have to say that name many more times because I am getting tongue-tied, which is so often what I do on Shelby on Safari. I've seen the chat going crazy. Are you guys having a good little time there? Is anybody actually listening to this? Because you all have to tell me what real life animal you think uh, Xerneas is based off. So yeah, points is correct. Oh, ho, ho. thank you. Oh my gosh. What flavor candle do you have behind you? Oh, that one. That's my um, mango one, my Hawaiian flap, my Hawaiian one. I believe it's mango and I can base it off the smell. Tropical fruits. Actually, we should probably. Exotic fruits. Ah, close enough. Exotic, tropical, same thing. Uh, that one is old. I tried lighting it earlier and it didn't want to light and I'm sad because there's still like some of it around it but when I tried lighting it, it just wouldn't work speaking of Yankee Candle not a sponsor of Shelby on Safari but they totally should be uh my friend Emma who's in the chat she likes Yankee Candles too go Yankee Candles uh they smell amazing she has the vanilla frosting one which also smells rather nice but uh yeah Yankee Candle if you're watching hook me up please that would save uh, <laughs> a lot for Christmas and birthday gifts woohoo Ah, oh, and Tiffany likes them too. Excellent. Yes, if you like Yankee Candles, let me know in the comments down below and hopefully we can get attention of Yankee Candle. That would be fabulous. Although in this household, we only get the large Yankee Candles. There's none of the small business with this. No, we go big or we go home. So we covered the first animal that I am proposing to you could have inspired Exernius, the life Pokemon, the fairy Pokemon that's coming out in just a few days on Pokemon Go in the Pokemon Luminous Legends X event, which is very exciting, along with Gumi, Spritzy, Swirlix, and a whole host of dragon and fairy friends are going to be invading our mobile screens, and hopefully we'll be getting the legendary Pokemon Exernius as well. So the second inspiration uh, candidate for Exernius that I want to share with you fine friends on this fine evening is... <laughs> I don't do myself any favors by choosing words that I probably am pronouncing terribly wrong. Sir, no, sir, I should have looked this up ahead of time, but I was like, no, it can't be that difficult. Cernanos? Cernanos? We're going to go with Cernanos. Uh, C E, uh, actually, I'm going to type it in the chat. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I am just. And I'm so excited for this Luminous Legends event. I'm, I can't lie. I'm so looking forward to Gumi. I mean, Xerneas is cool and everything, but, uh, you know, gotta love my slime dragon. Uh, so Xerneas, uh, you all are going to be like, what? That's not a real life animal? Which it's not. Uh, 
But as you know, if you follow Shelby on Safari or if you uh, know me, which some of you in the chat do, I love history. And so I thought, why not throw in a little sprinkle of Celtic mythology into our discussion tonight? Because Cernius is a god. Now, he's not really, well, we'll get to his form later. Well, I should describe it now. It is quite human noid in nature, except for one big thing. Antlers! Woohoo! Uh, <laughs> so Cernius is a god of Celtic mythology. He is associated more with male animals, especially stags during rut, because, well, he has, you know, the antlers, and he's also kind of, because of that uh, association with male animals, indirectly uh, associated with, like, fertility with life and things of that nature. So he is the Lord of the Forest, and he's very similar to a lot of my friends here in the chat. Oh, Fabian! Hello, Fabian. Uh, he's a lot. He's probably associated with a lot of my guy friends in the chat during a uh, lockdown because he had a very shaggy uh, hair. <laughs> it's quite over um, overdue for a haircut, and he had a beard, quite scraggly in nature. But that's okay because he's the Lord of the Forest, and he didn't really have to count to anybody except for himself. Whereas you guys probably had like Zoom business calls and things like that. So, yeah. So not really shaggy, really over um, overgrown hair, for lack of a better phrase. But of course, the big kind of standing out aspect of Seronius, the Celtic god, is the antlers. Now, I know I keep bringing up the antlers, but it's just so cool. And going into dates, not necessarily because like with the others, I can give you approximate height and uh, width of the antlers per se. With Xerneas, we're going to look more at dates because obviously... Uh, mythological, myth, uh, mythologically speaking, you know, that's what kind of numeric value we can look at. So visual representations of this horned deity, he's also known as the Great Horned One, the Horned One, because the horns, the antlers are so prominent. And if you are to kind of Google Seronius, which I put in the chat, uh, <laughs> is definitely worth looking up because it's rather intriguing seeing the different depictions of him. Um, so there are small figures that date back from uh, about roughly the 7th to 4th century BC and even 1st century BC that are in different parts of Western Europe, which is quite intriguing seeing the spread of Xerneas. Uh, some people have even suggested that the horned deity was almost kind of venerated as the shamanic god of the hunt since prehistoric times as well, which is really trippy. Um, and so I guess that kind of lends into like the myth and the lore of him being, you know, embodying the forest, embodying life in an odd way. Also, you know, the hunt, I feel like the yin and yang aspect is coming in, like Xerneas with Yvetel, you know, Xerneas brings life, Yvetel brings uh, destruction, you know, the hunt also can do that as well. Obviously, hunting an animal brings about, you know, destruction of the animal, but then can also bring life to those that make, you know, the deer a meal type of thing. Circle of life, really. Uh, but <laughs> going back to a little bit more recent times with our Celtic god Seronius, back in 2018, so more recently, Archaeologists here in England actually discovered a five centimeter long copper alloy human humanoid figurine uh, that probably dated back to the second century AD over in Cambridgeshire, which is very exciting at the Wimpole Estate. Oh, that sounds fun to say, Wimpole, Wimpole Estate in Cambridgeshire, and. Uh, this statue looks a bit odd because it does seem like it has no face, but the researchers have hypothesized, given the little figurines, uh, figurines antlers, that it could represent Serenus, the Celtic god that we're discussing. That could be a counter, a uh, real life inspiration, I should say, to Xerneas, the life-giving Pokemon that's very much based off a stag type animal. Um, so again, going back to the concept of life, since Xerneas is, you know, the life Pokemon, I want to say that Xerneas, thinking of like what could have inspired him being given this attribute of like life force per se from a mythology standpoint and thinking of like the real world counterpart, 
when you think of like the seasonal changes and things such as that, you know, the part where people of these days, I don't know, I just feel they had a very different connection with nature than maybe we do today. And so thinking of the effects that like the forest and the changes that the forest goes through from one season to another, how life kind of continues on, not to get like super deep or anything, but I wonder if that plays a part into why he's associated with life, if that makes sense. Um, and it kind of makes sense, you know, thinking of the seasonal changes, the hunt as well, like I just mentioned. So yeah, that's Serenius, the Celtic god of many different things, but more predominantly kind of a humanoid figure depicted though with antlers and often seen in the forest because he's known as the Lord of the Forest. And so I wonder if he was partly inspiration for Xerneas, the life Pokemon. But that is up for you to decide, friends, because we have one more animal. And this one is a real life animal that still exists today that I think could be possibly a candidate for the inspiration of Xerneas. The life Pokemon, also fairy type Pokemon, coming to Pokemon Go in the Luminous Legends event in just a few days' time in the fabulous Pokemon Go game. We've had a lot going on lately. We had Sustainability Week, we had Rivals Week, which I covered the real life Skrelp and Cluncher, which you can also find in the Pokemon playlist after this live stream is done. Uh, there's so much happening and uh, it's just really exciting time to be playing the game amongst many other games in the Pokemon franchise. I should say that it is the 25th anniversary of Pokemon, so it should come as no surprise there's a lot of stuff going on. You know, the new Pokemon Snap game that I mentioned earlier with my friend Ken, the collaboration we did on Friday, which I'll put a link to in the description down below so you can learn more about the real-life Illumina phenomena. In that one, I just love saying Illumina Phenomena because it's fun to say. Try it. Um, so, oh, your favorite season is the fall. Oh, not autumn? <laughs> why, why is it fall, Alice? Is it because of the uh, pumpkin spice? I do love pumpkin spice. I do love pumpkin pie. Oh, pumpkin pie. Any season, it's a good season for pumpkin pie in my book. Ah, uh, well, I digress. Actually, I had a really delicious uh, chocolate chip cake that was baked for me tonight. It was delicious using uh, Easter candy, Easter chocolate. It was very good. And I'm not really like, I don't know how I feel about like chocolate and cake. Sometimes it can be really good. Like I think Colin the Caterpillar cake here in England it, it is very delicious, but I had a bad experience with chocolate cake for my 11th birthday, which I don't want to digress into right now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was, a, it was just a, you know, nice cake with chocolate bits in and they were nice and melty because obviously it was hot. Highly recommend, friends. Highly recommend. Oh, Emma, you've had pumpkin pie? Oh, that's so exciting. Did you have it with whipped cream? Please tell me you had it with whipped cream with a little bit of dash of cinnamon sugar on top, hopefully. If you didn't, I'll just have to make it for you this year. Yay! Oh, well, I could talk about food for ages, and, and we don't have ages. We gotta get through this third real life animal counterpart that I wanna introduce you to, to before you guys make up your decision of which one you think expire, inspired, expired, inspired Xerneas, the life Pokemon that also happens to be a fairy type. So friends, we are gonna talk about the red deer. Dun, dun, dun. Ah, the red deer is the largest land mammal of the UK, oddly enough, so my uh, friends here in the UK, that is our largest land mammal. And uh, I wanted to throw in the red deer because the Kalos region, the region where Xerneas is, is of course France. You can't mistake Lumio City for any other city other than Paris. And so I wanted to find a real life animal counterpart that is currently in France, because, well, why not? And so the red deer came into mind for many different reasons. Uh, one of which is they get up to 2.1 meters tall. So quite tall, but still shy of Xerneas. But however, they do outweigh quite literally Xerneas because they weigh up, well, well, no, they don't. Because they weigh up to 200 kilograms and Xerneas I think was 215. So they're getting close, they're getting close in terms of weight. So anyways, the red deer is quite large. Still not as large as Xerneas, but still up there. Now, in terms of antlers, because this is the coolest bit about red deer, in my opinion. In fact, I'm gonna tell you about a scientific study that was recently done on red deer antlers. Whoa, it's awesome, awesome, awesome. 
So in terms of males and females, only male red deer have antlers. Uh, not for the ladies, sorry. Well, for our friends like uh, Stantler, <laughs> Stantler, Reindeer, uh, aka Stantler, which I've also done a comparison video on. Check it out in the Pokemon description down below. Um, oh, both males and females reindeer have antlers, whereas our red deer friends, that's where I was going, our red deer friends, only the mare, ma only the males have antlers. And uh, with this in mind, obviously it's for fighting and being like, hey ladies, trick me out. Um, the antlers grow and they develop with age. They get a bit more intricate. So when, when they start out, they're just two points. However, over time, they can get up to 16 points, which is insane. Talk about very intricate. It makes me think of Exernius, oddly enough, surprise. Uh, these antlers, however, shed every year and they regrow, which it doesn't seem like uh, our friend Xerneas is, does that, is, does that, but it is a very important process and it can be quite like terrifying seeing like, the, the shedding coming off of the antlers. I think of, um, well, I think of the reindeer when they, when their antlers are doing that. It's quite a trippy process to see, but uh, yeah, so that is the red deer. Just a quick overview of their antlers because I want to talk about this study. So I found a study that specifically looked at red deer's antlers to see, well, they use them as bioindicators of environmental pollution. Crazy, right? So they published this study in 2020. So these cool scientists thought actually, because the antlers shed every year, they can tell us a lot of information, almost like, you know, the rings on the tree, how you can be like, ooh, this is this happened, or you can tell like when there was a fire, or when there was a flood, or a drought, or whatever. Tree rings can tell you a lot. They used red deer antlers to judge, you know, the environmental pollutions based on the composition of trace elements in their antlers, which I thought was such a cool idea. So literally, these scientists looked at antler samples ranging from 1953 all the way up to 2012, again, to look at the trace element composition within them, both of toxic and essential trace elements. So they did have the fine balance of uh, looking across the board at different ones. Now, they did find, this is the exciting bit, because often at this point when I tell you a real life you know, study, sometimes it can be a bit depressing, uh, especially when we talk about, say, like the Santa Catalina um, Island rattlesnake, you know, that's critically endangered and sadness, sadness. This is exciting because <laughs> they found a declining trend, uh, a decreasing trend of both lead and mercury within the red deer's antlers, which is a very good thing because lead and mercury aren't the best things. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah quite toxic. And so to see a decreasing trend over time of red deer antlers actually having them, it's a positive site for the future. And it actually corresponded to environmental changes in both Poland and Europe. So I just thought that was a fascinating study that can really tie into Xerneas and the power that it has of giving life where these red deer, you know, their antlers are very vital, obviously, for fighting over ladies and impressing them and whatnot, but their antlers can leave behind a story for us to see and see what life was like, you know, and hopefully see, you know, a decrease in some environmental pollution, pollutants like lead and mercury. So that is the red deer in a nutshell some of the interesting things. We focused a little bit on like the height and the weight of some of these animals, or when it came to Seronius, the Celtic god, looking back at the early dates of how long he's been around in terms of folklore mythology. Uh, I'd be really keen now to hear from you guys in the comments, if you're still with me, on which of the three you think most inspired Xerneas, the life Pokemon, the fairy Pokemon coming to us in Pokemon Go in just a few days time. So as a quick recap, we have Euclidoceras, the extinct but gigantic deer species that had really big horns, uh, well, really big antlers and was just rather impressive in size and stature. 
Um, but, and they were also the first ones to have the evolved antlers, remember? So that's pretty cool. The first of their kind to be like, hey, look at these impressive antlers. But then of course we looked into Seronius, the Celtic mythology aspect, where even though he's more humanoid in stature, he too still has the antlers, but he can also symbolize life and giving life to others, which of course is a huge aspect of Xerneas, the life Pokemon. But then at the end, we talked about the red deer now and how they too have uh, powers, real life Pokemon powers in terms of their antlers that where the males just have them, they shed them every year. But then scientists have recently been able to use these shed antlers to give us information about how life was and possibly, you know, help life get better over time. So, wow, Jiminy Crickets, you guys are hot. Oh, welcome to the YouTube account. Oh, is everybody welcome, welcoming Fabian? Aw, Fabian's our friend who we're trying to convince to start a YouTube channel. So he is one step closer now. He is registered on YouTube. So it's very exciting, Fabian. I can't wait to see what channel you decide to create. Hopefully you share one with your spaghetti bolognese recipe because rumor has it you make a mean spaghetti bolognese and I'd love to hear your recipe. So I get a lot of votes for red deer. Okay, so you guys are only <laughs> big butt deer for sure. Is that Xerneas? Is that the one you're going? Or not Xerneas. Is that um, Euclidoceros, Ken, that you were voting for? Oh, nobody likes the mythical one. See, I thought I'd throw in the mythical, mythological friend Seronius just for fun because it's interesting in its history. But I agree. I, I, I would probably say more like the red deer, but maybe a combination of all three. You know, that, that uh, but that wasn't one of your options. You had to pick one. So, <laughs> oh, you did. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Tiff. Wait, I'm uh, scrolling through. I'm scrolling through. I think the first one, which I'm not going to try to spell. Oh, thank you, Tiffany. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> They're fun words to say. Fabian's Kitchen Channel. That's right. How to cook Xerneas Red Deer. No, Jason. Oh, my goodness. You're so bad. Uh, Red Deer. Yes. Yeah. Why does go back to eating animals? I know. They're always hungry. You guys got to get some, like, real food. Oh my goodness, get get some chocolate cake or chocolate chocolate chip cake, which is what I had. Anyways, friends, my goodness, what a crazy evening it has been. I feel really bad. I haven't read all of the chat, but I have a feeling I'm glad I didn't read it because I would have been distracted and laughing the entire time. My golly gee, you guys have been so fun. <laughs> Sharing your insights, spending your evening or day or wherever, whatever time you're watching this with me as we looked over the Luminous Legends event in Pokemon Go coming up real soon with Gumi, Spritzy, Swirlux, all of our friends coming into Pokemon Go, but more importantly, the legendary fairy type Pokemon, Xerneas coming. I encourage you guys, if you haven't already, start walking with your fire type Pokemon that can mega evolve, whether it be Houndoom or Charizard. So then that way you can mega evolve it and then battle Luxernius and hopefully catch it in the next few days during the Luminous Legends X event coming to Pokemon Go. Uh, I probably should plug my channel <laughs> if you haven't already. Subscribe. So that way you can be notified when I start lives like this one, uh, especially when Pokemon Go releases these events. And I'm like, oh my god, I have to talk about Xerneas because it's such a cool Pokemon and its real life counterpart, which uh, by Gooby, Gumi, Gumi, it's a cute little slimy dragon thing. And I'm going to do, a, I, I, I promise you, I am going to do a animal comparison proper video. Uh, my videos come out every Friday on Gumi and a real life counterpart, in which we'll go more in depth into a specific animal that has an incredible conservation story as well because you know me so friends before i say good night and goodbye i want to thank you all for hanging out and uh sharing your passion for <laughs> food your passion for making me chuckle and also for the red deer an incredible real life animal that is like a pokemon in my opinion and obviously with you guys you guys think he is most like exerneus the life Pokemon. The red deer are incredible. I encourage you, uh, especially like here in the UK, they are, I would say almost royalty. They are stunning to see, not just because of the impressive size of the antlers when it comes to the males, because as we know, only males have the antlers, but just, yeah, I just find them absolutely fascinating. 
And I uh, hope you guys did too, because I didn't know about that study where they looked at the composition of their antlers for trace elements and found, luckily, a decline in both lead and mercury. And so here's hoping, fingers crossed, you know, we're making making changes step by step and taking action to help protect the real life Pokemon of our world and protect our world as well at the same time. So with that, friends, I want to say adios, amigos. Have a wonderful evening. Be sure to check out the links in the description below that I will put down there to check out the other Pokemon videos, like the one with Pokemon Snap with our friend Ken. Uh, we did Pokemon Rivals Week. I talk a lot about Pokemon uh, and animals. I do also do other pop culture videos, but hopefully I'll see you guys over in those videos. And if not, well, I'll see you guys on Friday for Friday's video in which I go to the Hawk Conservancy Trust and I'm bringing you guys with me on this epic journey that happened just a few days ago. It was a beautiful fine day. Got to see some incredible animals that I will introduce you to and share with you one of my favorite animal species. So uh, spoilers for that one. It is quite a hoot and quite, well, it's not quite a hoot because it's not a hoot. It's not an owl. It, it's a different bird of prey. But uh, yeah, you'll have to watch to find out which bird of prey it is. Ooh, I'm very excited. I would show you a hint, but I can't because I have a sticker of it on my computer. And obviously I'm talking to you guys now on my computer. But anyways, you'll find out Friday. All right, friends, have a good rest of the night. I got to go check on Maui because he's grumpy that I kicked him out of the room. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Night, everybody. If I can press end stream. <laughs>